Okay. Hi, and welcome to the Emerson Science Center. We're going to start out here in our lobby and introduce you to our brand new resident. This is a Florida black bear. It's been taxidermied. And when you come visit us, you can come in and rub him for good luck. So come on with me now. We're going to go down the hallway. Take a quick peek into the Mini Makers Lab. This area is specifically for our preschool age children. And then we can come over here to our ecosystem room where we have our taco box and our pool noodle ocean and coming real soon, our brand new lionfish exhibit. Whoop. Grab your sunglasses because we're going outside now. On either side of us, we have our turtle ponds. We can come over here and say hello to Cece. Hi, Cece. And oh, we have to play the game of find the tortoise. Sebastian, let's see if he wants to come out and play. Nope, he's all the way back in his house taking a nap. But that just gives you something to look forward to next time you visit. If we walk across the yard over here, you can take a sneak peek at our brand new exhibit that we're almost ready to have you guys come in and out and play on. It's our boating on the Emerald Coast exhibit. So we have a real live pontoon boat that you can come play on and pretend to drive. And we have life-size cutouts of the sea turtles that live and nest on our local beaches. All right, we're going back inside now. And as we do, we're gonna cut through our maker space. Today, we have an activity on kaleidoscopes in the makerspace. And if you want to come and do something in the makerspace, be sure to check our website for our makerspace times and activities. And this is our main gallery area. Oh, look at his bubble. Oh my gosh. All the way to the ceiling. Do you guys think that's hard? Was it hard to do that? Um, no. Takes a little practice, right? <laughs> awesome. So come on this way. And we're gonna cruise through our animal room and then take a peek at the small lab room. Okay, we're gonna head back over to our animal room. And today we're gonna read a book about snakes. So I thought, what better way to read a book about snakes than to have a snake help me? And this is Avogadro. Avogadro is a ball python. These guys are not native to the United States, but they're very popular pet snakes. So Avi, you ready to learn a little bit about yourself? The story is called Amazing Snakes. Snakes don't have arms or legs. They don't have wings or fins, but some snakes can climb trees or swim in water. Others can dig underground. Some even jump off branches. 
They flatten their bodies so they fall slowly and land safely. There are more than 2,000 different kinds of snakes. Some are shorter than a pencil. Some are almost as long as a school bus. All snakes hunt prey to eat. Some hunt rats or mice or fish. Many eat other snakes. A few even eat crocodiles or catch birds or bats in the air. Snakes look for their prey. They do not have eyelids. A clear scale covers each eye. Snakes never blink. Some small prey, snakes smell prey with their noses. They also stick out their tongues to pick up the smell of prey. Some snakes can feel heat from another animal's body. This helps them find their prey in the dark. Oh look, watch Abby's tongue. Some snakes like boas and pythons kill their prey by squeezing. These snakes are called constrictors. A constrictor wraps its long body tightly around its prey until the prey stops breathing. That's what Avi is, he's a constrictor. Some snakes like vipers and cobras kill with venom. These snakes have sharp fangs. When they bite, venom flows from the fangs into the prey's body. Snakes with venom can kill animals much larger than they are. Some can even kill people. Always be careful whenever you see a snake in the wild. Never approach it. A snake's long pointed teeth can catch prey but can't chew it. Snakes must swallow prey whole. A snake can open its mouth so wide it can swallow something bigger than its head. If your mouth and body were built like a snake's, you could swallow a whole watermelon. Some baby snakes hatch out of eggs, others are born live. Some snakes can give birth to hundreds of babies at once. Young snakes do not need parents to take care of them. They survive on their own, hunting small prey like worms, insects, and lizards. I don't know, Avi, that little baby snake looks an awful lot like you, doesn't he? A snake gets bigger every year. After a while, its skin gets too small and wears out, just like your clothes do. Then the snake must shed its skin. First, it rubs on a tree or a rock until its skin gets loose. It wriggles out of its old skin. A new skin has grown underneath. Here is an example of one of our snake skins that has shed. And you can see it's all the way down to the very, very tip of his tail. This isn't obvious. This happens to be Babbage's. Some snakes have skin the color of grass or sand or dirt. Others have patterns that look like leaves. These colors and patterns help snakes hide from animals who hunt them. A rattlesnake can hide in sand or leaves, but if something gets too close, the rattle shakes its tail. Rings of thick skin at the end of the tail rattle together loudly. The sound tells everyone a deadly snake is near. Snakes can live in trees or in oceans or underground. You can find them in jungles or deserts or your own backyard. But you're not likely to find a snake in the snow. Snakes hibernate in the winter. They go underground where they will not freeze. The snakes do not eat or move. They wait for spring. Snakes can live almost anywhere, but it's hard for them to live near people. Houses and buildings take up the land where snakes live. Many snakes are hit by cars, and people often kill snakes because they are afraid of them. They don't know how important snakes are to our world. Snakes hunt animals like rats that can spread sickness. Many other animals like hawks and raccoons eat snakes. Without snakes, these animals could not live. Snake venom can be used in medicine and may even help cure cancer. Scientists go into the jungles and forests to count snakes and study them. Sometimes they put a tiny radio under a snake's skin. Then they set the snake free. The radio sends out signals to scientists use to follow the snake. They learn what the snake eats, how it hunts, where it sleeps, and what it needs to survive. Snakes need a safe place to live and food to eat, just like people do. Then they will stay a part of our world. So come by and visit Avi, and you can get up close and personal and see him and learn more about snakes while you're here. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon at the Emerald Coast Science Center.